miles an hour. One to one speed on my mile per hour per RPM, which is What's up guys, welcome back to Making Motor Moves. On today's episode, apparently I've decided to give you a full walkthrough and a little bit of a sea trial in the rain. Yeah, this is my 1992 Sea Ray 380 Sunsport. If you guys haven't seen the old videos, go back and watch them. We pulled this thing out of the weeds, falling apart, covered in mold. Should never have ran or drove ever again. But anyway, we're gonna do a sea trial walkthrough Appreciate you guys watching. As always, like and subscribe to the channel. This is Make Your Motor Moves. My name is Ben, and here we go. We are back on the Sea Ray 380 Sun Sport. And we're on the water right now. It's a little wet. I don't know if you can see outside. You see outside? On the water. But right now, something really special just happened. I'm gonna get away from this loud dehumidifier. Boom! My first piece of upholstery is finished. I don't know if you guys know the saga, but to make a long story short, I gave my upholstery to a not so great source, promised some big promises and was not able to fulfill them. So after a lot of heartache and about a year and seven months, I got all the upholstery away from that guy shipped out to Maryland. And now the new guy is taking care of the upholstery piece by piece. So here's the first one, the captain's helm chair. Next will be the co-captain's chair. And then we'll do the swim platform in the back. And then my wraparound seating. I'm sorry, it is super messy in here right now. The boat is like half usable, half construction zone. But let's, um. Let's give you a little walk through of what's going on. And then if the rain lets up, we're gonna go for a sea trial. All right, in the meantime, I've been going to town replacing a lot of my windless anchor components. So those are two new foot switches for the bow. I've completely gutted, I shouldn't say completely, as much as I possibly could gutted the old glass in piece of plywood that was up here and put in some new um you can see it a green backing fiberglass closed cell foam new plate so all this has been cut out west systems epoxied uh i just need to put my foot switches in as you can see this one needs a few more chips out and then its own green plate that one was okay, but then there's my there's my big windless motor. I got that back in yesterday. I need to hook it back up. I need to mount the solenoids back to the ceiling, and then that'll be done. And then I can put my anchor back on. But the goal is to take you out, do a full walk through the boat, and then do some runs on it, show you how she performs, what she cruises at, um, top speed, all that stuff. So right now I'm just standing under my new Bimini, which is fantastic.
Couldn't have picked a worse day. Well, like I said, I need to get the boat to stretch its legs a little bit. It's been two weeks, so I need to run it. The pressures are good, voltage is good. Been out like 10 times maybe, and I've only used half a tank of fuel, which is awesome. Whatever, that's what it is. I was able to do some cleaning since everything got wet. Next step is my steering. I just diagnosed that my steering um, the cable that goes back to the power steering is just super stiff. So I either need to figure out how to grease it or replace it entirely. It just sucks. I know my power steering works. I actually swapped my pumps uh, this season and no issues there. Everything works fine. It's just a stupid cable. It's really stiff, which is typically a classic problem with older boats. And it's just a rack and pinion steering it goes through a push cable that goes back and pushes the power steering pump cylinder back and forth. It's coming along down here. Still a construction zone though. I didn't pull out my chart plotter today. We're just gonna run down the South River and then back up and then come back in. You know, my trim gauges haven't worked because my wires are absolutely garbage, but this one's like, deciding to flicker all of a sudden. No, it doesn't wanna do it, there it goes. That one doesn't work either. Everything else is working good. Engines stay about 165 when we're running. I could pull the thermostats out, but uh, they get brand new water pump impellers every year. No need to. And I did that little cutout on the throttles. The engines used to hiss really bad um, with air when it was coming back from the, uh, getting past that throttle body intake. It would hit that dam and just make this big hissing noise. Now the engines are just really a lot more throaty, much quieter actually underway. All right, we are past the six mile an hour mark, about a thousand RPM. We can go ahead and, and get up on plane. I just bumped my trim two touches to get the Stern drives out of the water a bit. I'm actually gonna let her ride like this for a second. Throttle back a touch, cause I want all the water in the engine bay to kind of drain towards my, uh, towards the back. I had a bunch of water in there. Anyway, this speed right now, I'm probably going like 18 miles an hour. issues at all. Gorgeous out. All right, I'm gonna give it another second, and then I'll uh, I'll goose it up. All right, we'll shut that off. Go ahead and goose her up. You gotta balance the throttles. There's no synchronizers on this boat. She's gonna come up. We're gonna be offset a little bit. I've been playing with this a lot to get them square. But now we're probably doing about 28 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour. 
one to one speed on my mile per hour per RPM, which is nice. Engine's four wheel line, good oil pressure. You got a boat, it's a good running boat. Brand new, rebedded piece of uh, fiberglass foam, closed core, all sealed. West Marine Systems, epoxy sealed hatch, 4,000 around sealing the base of my windlass. Rehooked up, I just gotta get my anchor pulpit back on after this gets painted. So right now it looks atrocious. I sanded some things and it needs to be painted. It just, I need to. You know, I got all the mechanical, electrical, well, mostly stuff taken care of. It's just like this little stuff. All right, now let's get rid of the, the paint and uh, maybe let's get some bigger cleats to tie off to. Um, maybe I should pull the hardware up here and repaint the deck again properly so it doesn't look like that in some spots and, you know, it's just money, right? Money, time, <laughs> tears, blood. That's why we do it though. We do it because of this, it's gorgeous. It just rained, so literally nobody's out on the water right now. It's gorgeous out. I mean, how can you, how can you beat this? I may even crack open a beer real quick and. Temporary speakers that have now been here for like two years um, and they do great. It's got a good amp and everything on this boat. It's wired up for subs and whatnot. I just need to buy some new speakers and put some nicer ones on. We got the kitties burn. That's a reminder. Twin 454, 7.4 liter. Big block Chevy General Motors. They're, uh, what, the Mercruiser calls them 7.4 liter Mercruiser MPI. They make 310 horsepower a piece, and they're paired to two Bravo 3 Gen 1 stern drives, one of which I have entirely rebuilt because the upper end blew up last summer. Two to one ratio. So every two revolutions of the engines, one revolution of the props, running twin, 28 pitch, three blades that are counter rotating on each stern drive. Not a bad setup. And then we got all this space. Next step, engine hatch, all this stuff in here. Gonna be rebedded. I guess rebedded. I gotta I gotta chip the rest of this out. It's a fiberglass on both sides. Chip all the wood out and then clean it, fill it with a two-part foam mix. Sea decking is being installed periodically. And then I'll get all my sun pad cushions, which I'm really scared about because I really don't want those to get gross or damaged. And I'm curious how I'm gonna keep all the water and moisture off of them. I may need to seal my cover that goes over the whole cockpit much better. We'll see, I may have to get additional covers. I may get individual seat covers for these too. Who knows, all these loose seats, they're gonna be done last, but those can all be picked up and placed inside. Um, I like to turn my blower on when I'm just sitting running stationary. This is a work in progress. All these gauges at some point are gonna be uh, replaced. The horn's upset because it's wet. Need a new horn. That's besides the point. I got a safety one over here just in case. Some red chart plotter up here just is nice to have for the bay because there's so many shallow spots and whatnot. On average, you're only running in like six feet of water. And then down here, 
in the beautiful cabin. Everything for the most part's been bleached, um, cleaned, demolded. I mean, I still got the 1990 something headliner. And you know what? It is what it is. I'm not touching it. It's dry down here. I run a full like 1200 square foot basement dehumidifier when the cover's on. So all this is dry. When I go to sell the boat, what you see is what you get. Have the person watch all the videos, see where this boat came from, see what we did to it. I mean, it obviously is a great running boat now. It has and does everything you want. I've got a, again, it's like a construction zone in here. I need to clean up. I've got a vacu flush head, which I mean, I've cleaned the heck out of this thing too. Vacu flush head, that's in great shape. And this vent even works. Air conditioning pipe through. 32 years old but it does everything you want it to stereo over here a couple lights this used to be a tv tube tv's been removed don't need a tv i don't really ever need one on a boat put a keurig in there instead microwave works um storage storage you know what i could use a bag of chips kind of hungry Full-ish, queen, full-ish size bed up top. Wrap around seating. Again, more like leftovers from my sea deck. The additional tables that I need to install the bases on. Um, this hall side window, which I replaced. And then, you know, the other day I came here after I washed the boat, found it leaking. I hate it when that stuff happens. Uh, this has a full cover that we had sewn and made. Um, that covers the entire memory foam mattress. That'll go back on after I'm done messing with um, all of the anchor windless stuff up front. I'll, I'll walk up there and, and show you that. This is what I'm talking about down here. Windless anchor's been replaced. Got it all bolted up now. Motor's running, it's all good to go. Just need to get my solenoids mounted to the ceiling and my uh, new foot switches mounted on the deck. But that's been the whole oh, big winter project. Uh, that's the cabin, oh, and the electrical panel. Everything's working great there. Pretty simple. Still floating all right? Yeah, my depth isn't reading. Probably got some growth on it. Been in for a couple weeks. That's okay. I got a redundancy depth finder here. So there's one through the hole, and then I got one sticking off the back of the boat. It is reading temperature, so that's strange that the depth isn't feeding back. But this is a temporary cushion that I've been using in the meantime. Damn, GoPro battery died. Anyway, this is the utility closet. There's that amplifier I was talking about. I don't mind my noodles there. Keep my clean supplies down here as well. I need to pick up a bunch of bleach and just bleach all my bilges and clean my engine bay. Besides the point, brand new air conditioner that if you watched the old videos, you saw I installed this. Got a couple bugs to work out. This old water pump for it is no bueno, so it needs a new one. So I'll get a new water pump, but I put in a new strainer to my through haul. Like I was saying, new water um, bladder, water tank. Um, so, excuse me, things are really coming together. I got the plumbing to the bathroom, the plumbing up to the cabin for the air conditioning. The air conditioning, but just a big, big... Uh, storage compartment and uh, in 1992 it was this size my fuel tanks right behind that threshold that's a 200 gallon fuel tank and 93 they realized it was too small which is fine 
uh, went to a 300 gallon. So they moved all of this up forward, moved this forward, and you lose some of your storage space down there. But anyway, just uh, kind of a, oh, careful. Oh. Kind of a unique setup that you don't see in many boats. Just this random big old storage container right in the floor and no hatches for some reason you know how people have nice you know hatches that are nope just a just a big old fiberglass thing to break your toe same with these things you know these are really inconvenient you know they weigh about five pounds maybe more but that's where I stow all my uh, fenders again like I said it just rained so I'm using this as a opportunity to clean some things so anyway these also pain in the ass but they're thick they're nice got the perco latches so i can close them they got cup holders in them same thing over here this is my this is my trash can currently let's see um i got a subwoofer in the floor that needs to be replaced but it still works my oil some cleaning supplies, tied. You can always never have enough tide on a boat. Um, and then finally, this thing, which is not pretty at all whatsoever. Probably should put a seal on it. Anyway, until I get access to my main battery switches, so generator, port battery, starboard battery, and then I got a little. The engine meter over there, you guys can tell me what they say. Probably put about 10 hours on it. Ugh. So far, my two big blocks, a bilge, which I've been trying to drain, which I think it has. Um, again, things need to be cleaned some more. My generator that starts but won't keep running um, has a safety shutoff switch issue. So once I fix that, I'll be able to run the generator, which is unfortunately gas, but part of the nature of the beast. See, three fuel filters, big fuel tank down there. Swapped in a Victron charger. I got some janky battery banks right now. Need to get some real wood blocks, battery blocks in there and glass them in. Um, and then I'm missing a actuator for my engine hatch hoist. I'm gonna get a new actuator. Uh, instead of these silly cylinders that someone rigged into the trim tabs, literally, I mean, great idea, but really poor execution. Um, this thing just, the engine hatch, that's what I'm talking about, takes forever to raise using the trim pump. So, bad idea. Those are going bye-bye, and then for my engine hatch here. This is where the center actuator goes, so I'm going to put a big piece of that, um, fiberglass foam board so that I can support a larger area of this and it has more to push on because this is a it's a little flexible it's just old and that's it new I mean same ladder but rebatted and sealed um, now that it's not in gear or on you can see the stern drives hanging out down here they're looking good. Trim tabs, water line, bottom paint. Um, my transducer is somewhere down there. I can't see it. Nope, there it is. Just so slightly. The water is gross right now because uh, we just had a big rainstorm. But... There you have it, guys. Quarter life crisis. She is uh, she's doing great. Best she's ever been. Tender loving care. You know, we're doing our best. So, that's her. 1992 Sea Ray 380 Sun Sport. I love this boat. I hate this boat. I have so many mixed emotions about this boat because I've gone through so much to get it to where it's at today. And it's not even close to being where I want it to be. But let's be honest. It never will be. Like I was saying, you know, she is what she is. Um, she's nothing perfect, but she's a good boat. She runs good. She's had some cool things done to her. 
um, everything you could want out of a boat that is truly 40 feet long. I'm going to wrap this up. Appreciate you guys watching. As always, like and subscribe. Enjoy the channel. Welcome. It is almost summer, and we're going to do a lot more videos running around and uh, hanging out on the 1992 Sea Ray 380 Sunsport Quarter Life Crisis. Appreciate you guys for following along and tuning in. You have a great day. See ya. like this that's pretty good 3,000 rpm gallon per mile per engine 30 miles an hour baby Woo love it catch you guys later it's raining again
What's up, everybody? We are back on the. What's up, bro? What's up, everyone? We're back on the. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm.